Today we're going to speed up our workflow by changing our preferences, starting with our quick favorites. So in object mode, I think I'll quick favorite auto smooth in normals, auto smooth, and add to quick favorites so that I can hit Q and have that in my quick favorites, as well as some of my favorite modifiers. So I might put in mirror, solidify, bevel, array, weighted normal, shrink wrap, and that's most of my favorite modifiers. I don't need to say subdivision surface because I can hit like control two, one, three, and it will add a subdivision surface with that amount of subdivisions. Next, I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to do a few there. There's not that many that I think I need because I know most of the shortcuts here. However, there are some that I would often hit F3 and search for. So I might go ahead and put those in. So select similar, add to quick favorites, select by trait, check or deselect, and face grid fill. And I think that works well for my quick favorites in edit mode, maybe. In sculpt mode, I'm just going to add my favorite brushes, draw, clay strips, uh, maybe inflate, crease. I don't need smooth since I can just use shift, scrape, pinch. I don't need grab since it's an easy shortcut to remember in G, snake hook and maybe mask, and possibly the other masking tools. In the shading tab, I might just want to add some nodes. So I'll hit Shift A, and I'll go to texture. Now I'll want image texture at the top, maybe some of the other textures, noise texture, Roni texture, wave. Then maybe I'll add the ambient inclusion, add mix, maybe principled volume, Mix RGB, normal map, as well as bump, and under converter, color ramp, and under vector, I'll maybe add mapping, and that should be good for now. Now we can go back to the edit preferences, and I already did this one because it's good for tutorials. I raised the resolution scale from 1 to 1.2 to make everything a little bit bigger. And then we got themes, viewport, lights, editing, and animation. There's not really any that I really use, so you can look over them to see if there's any important options for you, but, but I'm gonna skip over them to make the video quicker. Under add-ons, there are a lot of useful ones, so you should really look through all of them to see if any one helps you. But I'll start with ones that I thought were helpful for me. Modifier tools, if I add a modifier, it will have things like apply all, delete all, toggle stack, disable the visualization of all of them. Under curve, we got extra objects. I found that the curve extra objects is, are useful because you can add things like spiral curves easily. There's also IV gen and sampling tree gen, which will help you to generate IV and trees for your environment. So those are pretty useful. I believe Ant Landscape is pretty useful for creating landscapes for your architectural stuff. Archie Mesh is pretty useful for architecture. I think Archie Pack should be useful, but I can't figure out how I use it. Bolt Factory, which gives you easy creation of things like bolts, nuts, and screws. We got some other ad meshes that I haven't really used much, but they might be interesting for you. Important export ones, which might be useful if you need some other format that isn't enabled by default. 3D Print Toolbox here is really useful for analyzing models for 3D printing and fixing certain problems. F2 extends your fill functionality by pressing F. Loop Tools, which gives you cool tools for your loops. So I could do something like taking a loop in any shape and then telling Loop Tools by right-clicking. In Edit Mode, right-clicking, I can choose circle. It's also tiny CAD, which is another thing that can be useful for architecture. Node Wrangler, it makes working with nodes a lot easier. Bool tool, which basically just gives you easier access to your booleans. Cell fracture, which you can hit F3 and search for cell fracture and it will break up your mesh that you have selected into a bunch of pieces so that you can use it for creating fracturing effects, maybe fracturing animations. 
scatter objects, which lets you draw a line and scatter objects around that line onto a surface. Some more pie menu options. We got Rigify. Basically, Rigify gives you some default rigs for your people and, and certain types of animals to make rigging a lot less of a pain. And Magic UV, which gives you some other tools for your UV editing, which I recommend looking for UV editing plugins because the default Blender UV editing is a bit limited. Now, there's definitely a lot more useful add-ons here and ones that aren't pre-installed with Blender to look through. I haven't gone through everyone, so there's very likely some ones that are super useful in general or super useful for certain specific tasks that will make your life easier. So definitely go exploring through these on your own. Next, we've got input. We got emulate numpad and three button mouse, which can make your navigation on a laptop easier, but Blender 2.8 added both these navigation tools in the top right. And if you hit tilde, you get a pie menu for navigation as well. Tilde is the in the top left next to the one key, but below the escape key on most keyboards. So it's not that important anymore but it used to be in previous versions. We also got our speed and thresholds for certain controls like, like dragging. I think that I'm going to want to increase the threshold because I find that with my drawing tablet that I, I do very often try to select something and then I'll accidentally box select multiple things because I'll put down the tablet pen and then it'll select. But as I pull it back up to finish my selection, I'll accidentally drag it slightly to the side or whatever and then it will start doing a box selection so i might go and play with that later under navigation we got some useful settings we got orbit around selection which will make it so that when you rotate around the view that you would go around whatever you have selected i'm more used to using lock to 3d cursor in view but both of these options are good under key map we have our keyboard shortcut settings so it can change select to right click select, which will also change a few other options to basically how it was before in Blender. Like it'll make your menu pop up with W instead of with right click and 3D cursor on left click. So if you want to go back to the previous way it was, you can change that to right. You can change the space bar back to search like before rather than play. One that I really like is select all toggles, which is the old way that pressing A and selecting and deselecting things worked in previous version. Now you're supposed to deselect with Alt-A or double clicking A and I'm not really used to that. So I prefer going to the previous behavior. And then we can add like pie menus for when you hit tab, it'll bring up the pie menu of all the options. Then you can always go into all these settings and change them yourself. There's also the option to go from Blender to Blender 2.7 or to industry compatible, which I believe is meant to be Maya, and maybe a little bit of 3ds Max keyboard shortcuts in there. So that's good if you're like playing around with it, switching from 3ds Max or Maya. But I would generally suggest going to the Blender shortcuts because I think they work a lot better in Blender than the shortcuts for the other programs. Under system, we got some good settings like the amount of undos that we have and the memory limit for undos. I'm gonna double the amount of undos because occasionally I really mess something up. So let's just make sure that I have plenty of undos. Now we got our CUDA and OpenCL options. So if you got a NVIDIA graphics card, you can use CUDA. And if you have AMD, you can use OpenCL. I have a GTX 1060, so I'm gonna use CUDA. You can also enable your processor as well so that you can render with both of them at the same time. I'm gonna leave that off. We got save and load settings, so you can change like your auto save settings and how many previous versions that you have for your older versions. You get like your blend one and blend two and stuff. And like how many recent files you'll get if you hit control shift O. You also got compressed file, which you can enable to make your blend files a bit smaller. So that's gonna be our preferences. Now we got some startup file things. I don't really feel the need to having both a layout and modeling tab so i'm just going to get rid of the modeling tab and then i'll rename this to layout slash modeling and then in solid mode i'll enable random colors as well as in wireframe mode so that i can tell between different objects a little bit easier and i'll also add in cavity which will make a little bit easier to see small changes in our 
mesh. And then I can go to file, default, save startup file, and this will save this file as my startup file. It's not a horrible idea to save this somewhere else as well by hitting Control Shift S to save it somewhere else just in case. So this was Mr. Tripod. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. Thank you.